We are in here in Sumner at the Sumner RSA and that's one of the sites where cliff collapse actually happened, which is the third geotechnical hazard. So we had land movement, we had um, cliff collapse from the top and this is debris inundation and cliff collapse. So again, a large boulder fell off and Camilla here is able to explain actually what happened in 22nd of February. So on the 22nd there was essentially a large part of the cliff fell off with a, a lot of other boulders that came off as well um, and we're just working on the other side of that ridge line there um, just knocking off even more loose material just to try and stabilize it all. So um, is this a unique area over here or are there actually more areas similar to that along Wakefield Avenue? There's plenty there's lots of areas just like this further up not quite as bad as this but there's there's plenty of others and this is another site of um, cliff collapse and in this case debris inundation can you describe the site a bit for us and what the key hazards are over here yeah so during the february earthquake there were a few few boulders that came down but it wasn't wasn't on this scale and then in june uh, all of this came down um, so there's some of the really big boulders and then there's some little tiny boulders as well but it's actually often the, the smaller ones are much more of the problem because they can fly quite fast and you wouldn't want it hitting anybody. So we have actually two hazards over here. We have the debris inundation from the material coming from above and actually a large scale burying um, area. So we see a couple of trees over there completely buried. Yep. And then we have these smaller boulders and then we have the little fast size rocks which extend a fair way. And they yep. are the fly rock. Yep. So the fly rock does exactly that and it flies. Um, it bounces huge distances and sort of places you wouldn't expect it to, or distances you wouldn't expect it to go. So we've put up a wall of containers all the way along uh, Wakefield Avenue, and that's purely to protect the roads and the houses and, and people behind uh, from the next fall, when or if it may happen. Okay, so we don't expect actually to, uh, to reach the container in this side, but it prevents the people behind using the road and the actually house sides uh, from the fly rock phenomenon. Yeah, if it, if it was to go that far. So just to summarize, this is one of the examples. This is this the worst ones you have or are there other examples in the Port Hills similar to this or actually worse? There's plenty of other areas in the Port Hills, one of which is over on the other side of the valley. We are here in Sumner in Habitant Avenue. With me is Rory Green from URS. Rory is a sector leader for this part of Sumner and Scarborough. Now, Rory, tell us what actually happened over here. Well, here we have another example of cliff collapse. And what's happened, this is a lot shorter than a smaller cliff than what you have on the other side of Sumner along Wakefield Avenue. But what happened, this occurred on the 13th of June and it occurred right after the larger of the two aftershocks, the magnitude 6.3. Yeah. And, and I understand you actually been working at that time over here, isn't it? Right, after the, the initial aftershock, we sent people out to have a look and inspect the area, and not five minutes before this happened, we actually had a few people looking at the bluff in this area, and after they walked away, the second aftershock hit, and then this is, this is what's happened, and we have, you can see some very large rocks. Yeah, this one is up to five place. meters high and fairly voluminous, isn't it? And there are a couple of trees over there which have been um, essentially rolled over and some infrastructure damage over here as well. So, so, yeah, so they can, you can see the amount of damage that, that something falling from not a very high height can actually do. This one in particular has left quite a big crater in the, in yeah. the sidewalk and the footpath. And we estimate the weight of this to be around 400 tons. Yes. Oh, you can actually see still vegetation attached to it, uh, now upside down, isn't it? So, right, and one of the difficulties when you're going out and inspecting these areas is the slopes that are covered with vegetation. Um, it, it often makes it difficult to see the cracking and such that, that you're looking for that are the signs of displacement. We're here on Heberdeen Avenue to take a, a look at one of the other boulder rockfall issues, which is boulders rolling and bouncing down slopes. And here we have a boulder that's come down from the slope up above. It's rolled and bounced downhill, and it's bounced into the middle of the street where it's broken a water main that's located about half a meter below the ground surface. And then it's bounced across the fence. We're gonna walk through the bounce marks on this boulder. And then it's come and it's rolled to a stop over into this area. Now this rock was mapped following the February 22nd earthquake 
And what we're doing is we're going and we're giving identification numbers. So this one was called A9 up at the top. And after the June 13th earthquake, this area got a particularly good shake. And this ended up falling down the slope and ended up here in the park. So this is with on Wakefield Avenue in Sumner and this is just another example of some of the big boulders that came down in February. This one's around about 25-30 tonne and it was bouncing its way down and hit the tree that's just fallen over there at about head height um, before it carried on bouncing and, and landed here and that tree is about well it's a diameter of a good half three quarters of a metre and it just snapped off and you can see on the on the rock there's still a lot of the bark just sort of stuck to the rock where it snapped off it was bound, it came through at about head height so it was coming down the hill pretty quickly